Hey, we're late for the small data meetup. Are you coming? I can't. I'm waiting for this BigQuery job to finish. Can you wait 18.2 seconds? But then all the sparkling water is going to be gone. Come on. OK, well, at that point, is it even worth going then? Well, I bet if you use BigQuery's clustering and partitioning features, your queries would run much faster and cheaper. That'd be great. Can you show me how? Yeah, let's do it. See, BigQuery is a great tool for analyzing huge amounts of data quickly. But there are plenty of times where you only care to analyze a subset of your data. For example, you may only want to look at data over a particular period of time or over a particular column. If you check out the illustration on the screen, you can see that I'm converting my unordered table on the left into a date partition table on the right and clustering my tags closer together. This is really going to optimize my queries when I analyze my data. Now looking at my GCP project, you can see that I have a Stack Overflow dataset, which contains a table with 10.8 million Stack Overflow questions, which have been gathered since 2014. This was pulled from the BigQuery Stack Overflow public dataset, by the way, which everyone has access to. From the schema, you can see that this table contains a bunch of great information from each Stack Overflow question, such as the ID, title, body, creation date, number of comments, what it's been tagged with, view count, etc. That's a lot of data across 10.8 million Stack Overflow questions. So let's say you want to gather some information on the types of questions being asked about Android in the last six months. To accomplish this, I wrote this simple SQL query. We can see that we only care about dates in the last six months and anything that has the tag Android in it. When running this query against my standard table, it has to scan all of the data and all of the tags and the creation date column, so you can see that it takes a few seconds and scans the full 18 gigabytes of data. Now, if we set up the table to be partitioned, BigQuery will only scan the parts of the table that fall into this date range. Ideally, you should start using partitioning when you first create your table. However, I'll run a DDL, or Data Definition Language, query to create a new table from this existing table and use the creation underscore date column as my custom partitioning column. Now let's run that query against my partition table. You can see that it returns in about a quarter of the time and scans about a tenth of the amount of data. Impressive. So let me get this straight. BigQuery is taking care of all of the hard work? Yep. You just tell it what date field you want to partition by, and BigQuery knows exactly what partition ranges to use to maximize efficiency. But what if I want to partition my data on something like a text column? Ah, that's where clustering comes in. Let me show you. Looking at this query, we're taking advantage of partitioning because we're filtering by creation date. However, the query still needs to scan across all the tags to find out which ones are Android, even though we're only looking for a single keyword. Clustering is a way for BigQuery to optimize the placement of your data and allows it to store alike data closer together to make queries more efficient. Typically, clustering works best on high cardinality fields, which maximizes the amount of benefit you'll get. By the way, you can cluster on multiple columns, so you aren't limited to just one. Just like partitioning, you should set up clustering at the get-go. So I'll run a similar DDL as before to create a new table but this time we'll cluster our data using the column tags. So now if we run these queries with clustering, we can see that we get our results slightly faster, and we're now scanning megabytes of data instead of gigabytes. So if I use BigQuery's partitioning and clustering, I'll only scan the data that I need to save both time and money. Exactly. It takes a little bit more work up front, but it's definitely worth it. And for those of you watching at home, check out the link in the description to try it out for yourselves. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more great Google Cloud Platform content.